October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we have a real warrior with us. Joining us, Sandra Lee was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2015. Nearly one in every eight American women diagnosed with it at some point in their lives. Now in a new HBO documentary, she is taking her private struggles public to help others. We're going to speak to Sandra in just a moment, but first, take a look at her story. This is going to be my red pepper ketchup. She's the superstar chef who can help you get dinner on your table in no time. But three years ago, Sandra Lee felt her time was running out when she got a life-shattering diagnosis. I just was still. I didn't even cry, I was stunned. You know, and that's just how fast life turns. It turns on a dime. Opening up on GMA in May of 2015, Lee was told by her doctor she had early stage breast cancer and within weeks underwent a lobectomy and a double mastectomy. There's two different ways cancer beats you up. It beats up your body and it beats you up emotionally. And it, I wasn't gonna let it rob me from one day of happiness. Sandra took control of her cancer by filming her struggles. What scares me is that this stuff just goes through your body and what if it's somewhere that we don't know where it is? And it develops. Now put together in a new and raw documentary for HBO called RX Early Detection, a cancer journey with Sandra Lee. Cameras follow her courageous journey and recovery with her sister, Kimber. Have you seen my Also by her side, her longtime partner, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. Nice to see you, ladies. I'm Andrew. I'm in charge of moral support. She hopes her story can serve as an inspiration for others struggling with the devastating disease. And our dear friend Sandra Lee is here with us right now. <laughs> You know, I'm with a friend when I can do this. I, know. I don't need the notes or anything like that to talk to you. We've been together too long. Yes, this has been a journey. Um, bless your heart for being so open and sharing so much. Why did you decide to, to let cameras in and to, to show people? Well, first and foremost, we all know that you are like the inspiration. No, kind of Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Your heart. I'm not so sure that I would have been as comfortable as I was had I not watched your journey. And what I realized from your journey was that when you show people what it really looks like, they can learn from your um, experience. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted to do. It wasn't available to me. What I show in this documentary was not available to me. When someone calls you and says you have breast cancer or anything, mm -hmm. you get a bump and an owie, you go online and you look, but there was nothing that showed me once you say breast cancer, and then you say either I'm through treatment, I'm done, I'm in remission, yeah. whatever you say, there's nothing in between. But what does that look like? If you're making that intense decision about your life, someone needs to show you what it is. And so I couldn't find it for myself, so I created it for everybody else. This is a tool for people who have gone through it, who have it, or who will have it, and it's a tool for their family to know how to take care of and deal with and understand. And I, I love how you say about it's not just for the person going through it, that it's also for the family so they can have a better understanding mm -hmm. uh, of, of the path that we're walking. Yes, exactly. It's not an easy path for anyone, mm -hmm. for yourself, for your caregiver, whoever it is. But also one of the things that's super important is not only knowing what the journey is, but you have to understand the epidemic that's going on. The epidemic is with younger women in their 30s and 40s, 90% of women have absolutely no family history. I did not. I didn't either. Every doctor says it's our environment. They don't know if it's our food, if it's our hairspray, or the combination of the both. And cancer, all it is, is a bad cell going rogue. Mm. And you have to be as aggressive with cancer as cancer is going to be with you at every stage. It doesn't matter what stage. And I love how this is educational. This is not just, you know, looking at your journey and, and what you went through and all that, but just also making your mess your message and being able to get the word out and to let people know these, these types of facts. You worked through it. Mm -hmm. What was the most challenging part? Of the, um, of, the, of the journey. So everybody knows that, it, you're going to be surprised by this answer. Mm. Everybody knows that I'm pretty open about my life and what I do right. and who I am and where I come from. <laughs> like, I'm good. <laughs> right. What was really uncomfortable is coming and being with you, going and being with, you know, um, other talk shows and, and other morning shows and, 
and feeling disingenuous when I was launching that product line and trying to compartmentalize my mornings and go to the doctor's office in the afternoon. Mm. That was really hard for me because I'm really comfortable just being who I am. You know, we're all flawed. And when you look at this documentary, there's no hair, there's no makeup, just like yeah, you. Right, right. You know, you were in a state where you were bald and you, and you just like pushed through it. But the most important thing is this. This is the most important thing. Forget about my journey, forget about your journey. It's about other people going through it. We have a journey. There are laws that need to be changed in this country. In, the, in New York, my partner, Andrew Cuomo, the governor, changed the laws. And here's what he did. He created a no excuses law. And that law does two major things. It does a lot of things. But here are the two major things. A lot of people have to choose to pay eight, nine hundred dollars for their copay or their deductible on their insurance. That eight or nine hundred dollars will heat your home for three months in December, January and February when you have two kids and you're a working woman. It will feed your kids for two months. So you're going to spend that eight, nine hundred dollars on a screening, which you may or may not have something, or you're going to feed and take care of your kids. Yeah. All right. So in this state, there is no copay, no deductible. The insurance companies are required to pay it for you. It's zero from first screening all the way on. Yeah. Yes. And two, the second big thing, we both know this, mm -hmm. time and money. Time. Preach. For an hour at lunch, I am, I'm wow. preaching, I am <laughs> doing this. I'm laying this down to all the other governors in the United States of America. You need to adopt this bill. Number two, time. Nine to five, we're working. At lunch, there's no time to go get a mammogram. It takes longer than an hour. We leave a majority of our clinics and hospitals open late in the evenings and on weekends to accommodate your schedules. So in New York, no money, zero. And we do it on your time. So no dime, and it's your time. <laughs> so you are good here. Every governor needs to be doing this. Now you preach. I know that I would like to challenge. Um, Andrew, beautiful man, was there by your side. And so, that beautiful woman right there, your My sister. Perfect sister. sister. Look at it. What was it like for you? to see and be a part of your, your sister's well, journey. you know, it's, it's difficult to watch anyone go through this process. It was difficult watching you go through mm -hmm. the process. Even more difficult watching someone, um, you know, that you care about. So, um, I mean, she's my sister. We're very close. I'm glad I was there with her. I couldn't imagine not being there. Mm -hmm. uh, but now that we're on the other side, I realize how important it is for everyone to have a person. So whether it's your sister, your best friend, or your coworker, everyone needs to have someone. Mm -hmm. And I'm just super proud of her that now that we're on the other side, that she's taking her experience and doing something with it and making a difference. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Uh, um, I've often said this, everybody's got something. Everybody in this beautiful studio has, mm -hmm. has something. Mm -hmm. And the tragedy is not, uh, with a loss of our health or our, our marriage, uh, whatever the loss, we're all gonna suffer loss. Mm -hmm. That's not the tragedy. It's if we don't take time to understand why this was placed in our path, what we can learn and what we can share with others to make their journey um, less painful than it was for us, and that's what it's all about. You know, yeah. Yeah. Often I walk past pictures of people in the 1910s or 1800s and they look mm. just like us and they had their moment on this beautiful planet. This is our moment on this beautiful planet. Our job is to help one another, to share with one another, to take care of one another. Whether we know one another or not, we are all sisters, we are all brothers, we are all in this together and none of us are getting out of here <laughs> alive. So help each other, be right. honest, be truthful, get into the details. Um, yes. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. I love you so much and, and, and how giving you have been with this. And the documentary RX Early Detection, A Cancer Journey with that woman right there, Sanjali, debuts on HBO on October 8th.